Wednesday on NBC. Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Kevin and Mikel. We are back with a new video. I hope you guys had a great weekend. Um, I know you guys didn't get a new, another video last week, but you guys know I've been busy running back and forth to the hospital to see my mom. And Mikel was busy with his church um, dealing with the death of this pastor, his mother, Mother Fleming. Um, I do have some uh, more updates. My mom is now in a rehabilitation hospital, so she's going to be here for a while uh, as she gets herself together. Um, I just want to say thank you to all who sent me uh, phone calls, texts, messages. Thank you guys so much. Please keep my mom in, um, in your prayers, and I thank you guys so much. Um, so yeah, um, I'm going to go see her tomorrow, and then I have to learn like some of the things that they're teaching her within her rehabilitation process so when she comes home she can be doing the same thing but during during all that it's still like a whole mess going on and I thank God for my uh, other sister that don't really be on camera because it's just a lot it's a whole lot going on but you know we, we're getting it together so just thank you guys again and um, I know that this past Saturday was a uh, Mother Fleming's funeral, I was in it was awesome. It was awesome, uncle. And so, it was well over 500 people in the church. And we had to bring in chairs. Oh, it was chairs. Every pew was packed. If I knew that's where, I mean, it was packed. And one of her granddaughters said, I've never been to an old person's funeral where all these people, when this many people came out. I and know it had to be a lot of stories going on in that church. It was a, uh, I mean, people were telling stories, but it wasn't, it wasn't like, well, like one of those normal. It was just that, you know, uh, I was explaining to my, one of my coworkers that, you know, this is somebody who's been a member of our church for 80 years. Like, she wasn't just somebody who was there. She was there for 80 years. She was an active member. Um, and then, you know, she raised, got married there, uh, had her three children there. Her, one of her sons became who is now our current pastor of the church. So she was an active member, and just about seven, eight years ago, she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, with the case of the day, um, she started going through that phase. Um, she was still active, even with her Alzheimer's, um, until they had to put her into a nursing home because she had, um, had one of her legs amputated. But um, it, it was just, that homegoing service was uh, a clear example of the life that she lived and the love that she had put out to a whole a lot of people in the 88 years that she was here with her. So, I mean, again, it was a beautiful service. My pastor did an excellent job, you know, eulogizing his mother. I mean, it was just, it was awesome. Like, the service was awesome. It, it was just, it was an awesome, awesome experience. And, um, yeah, that, I just thank God that it's now over because it's been, it was a long week for me. It was, it was, oh my goodness, Kevin, when I tell you it was a long week, it was a long week, and I didn't get that much sleep. And today I was at work with like uh, all back from sleep. This is a bunch of pictures. Yeah. Like it was, and this doesn't even really give you an idea of like, it was just awesome. Oh, yeah. It was awesome. It was nice. Yeah. It was awesome. So we had a wonderful time. Wonderful time. And there's a video that I posted on my page where my pastor's older brother is, um, uh, Pay tribute to their mother at the scene of the song, and um, it, it was it, it took me back to old Samson's when we used to be down in the 40s in Samson. It took me back to those days, and he got up there and he sang the song, and the whole congregation stood up with him as he was singing. And then before you knew it, everybody just busted and just was like, like his chorus. It was awesome. It was awesome, and. And it's like we got even louder. And then when his, when my pastor got up there and sang um, a song for two songs for his mother, it was it was the same. It was just awesome. It was, it was awesome. I can't. It was like one of those things that you had to have. Dinner. It wasn't a homegoing service. It was literally a celebration. Like it was, it was awesome. Mm -hmm. 
So we're going to move on with our topics. If you are watching the Scorpio Show for the first time, I hope that you click that subscribe button. Also, make sure that you click that like button and share this video to Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or wherever you choose to share our videos. As you guys know, this weekend has been a drama-filled weekend. Not only at the Oscars, but with Remy Ma and Nicki Minaj. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I think Nicki, I mean, Remy been sneak this in Nicki Minaj for a while. With her, um, she be like in the studio somewhere or somebody's uh, radio station and just doing a freestyle. Like, I know she coming at Nicki and some of this stuff, but she like, no, if I want to diss you, I'm going to say your name. So I was like, okay, but I never, well, I can't remember Remy Ma ever being in a beef, maybe with Fox Red, I don't know, if she's ever been in a beef with anybody in the rap game. So, you know, we running around, uh, just running around the town doing some stuff, and all I kept seeing was these images of a Barbie doll broken up. So I'm like, oh my God, I have to hear what Remy Ma said about Nicki Minaj. Because, you know, this is, apparently this is a response to, Remy's response is a response to Nicki Minaj. She did two songs, and they said she was dissing Remy Ma. So Remy Ma was like, no, bitch, I told you I wasn't talking about you. And then she just went off. But let me say, can I ask you this? Yes. The two songs, because I, I haven't heard, I I've heard a little bit of Remy's, and I haven't heard anything from Nicki. So, are we sure, I mean, I don't know, maybe I'll clarify this, but are we sure that Remy was responding back to Nicki? She definitely was. So Nicki did start it first. Yeah. It, allegedly. But I think that Remy did, I think Remy, come on, y'all, we're not stupid. I think Remy did take some shots at her. And then he was like, like, well, yeah, and I'm going to get you back, bitch. But I feel like I was confused because I always thought that Remy spoke highly of Nicki. Like, I was, I was confused because I'm like, well, what beat did they have, like? Did I miss the beef? They didn't have no beef. And I seen the video when Remy got out of jail. She was telling Nikki like, people want to say that, mm, right, you know. So she like, just don't fall for it. Right. And that's like, but how prepared Remy was, like, you had something out for her already. Like, you was waiting. It's kind of like you like, I'm just waiting, bitch, and then I'm going to get your ass. It's kind of like that fake friendship shit. Where you fake friend it, and then when something happens, you wait to attack, and you just keep going and going and going. And that's exactly what happened for seven minutes. She killed Nicki Minaj. And Nicki, it is way past 48 hours later, and you have not responded. I don't know what's going on, but you should have been responded to Remy Ma's, Remy Ma's whole sheet thing. I mean, it was seven minutes, and it was full of facts. Not ultra well, but it could be someone turning the facts. Because they say that Ebro, who's on um, Hot 97, who messed around with Nicki Minaj, she said that she fucked with Lou Wayne, she fucked with Drake. I mean, Trey Song, she just went down. Trey Song did come out and said that he never said that. Yeah. Which was, he was the only one that Remy Ma mentioned that came out and said, listen, I never said that. Mm -hmm. I don't think I don't think any of us kind of really doubted that she slept with Lil Wayne and with Drake. I mean, I, I, I never doubted I never doubted that. Doubt that. You know, but I will say that I think that it was kind of messed up that, you know, me Mill went running to her to, to <laughs> say something <laughs> personal. Like, if it's true. That's why I'm like, I why, if you ain't got no beef right. with Nikki, why are y'all having this conversation? But you know what's so funny? Because I think that, uh, like I was telling my coworkers today, I think that maybe me Mill did do it because I feel like if he didn't say anything to Remy, the person that he knows this, he would have already come out and clarified, like, no, because we already know how he likes to mm -hmm. go off on social media. But um, I just think that was a bitch move on his part to talk, you know, bedroom talk to your ex girlfriend's rap rival, rap rival, you know, a competitor. Like, why would you, why would you do that? And um, how did they even get on the side? How did they even get on the side? You know. <laughs> I need, I need an interview. Oh my god. I need an interview. I don't need, I need, I need an interview with Remy. And I need somebody to sit down, sit Remy down on the breakfast club, mm -hmm. you know, and for her to say why it is and how it is she got this information on her and, yeah, she went off about Nicki Minaj's brother who, um, who they said now has been, it's not even alleged that 
he was messing around with a young girl and then they found semen in her underwear. His semen is in her underwear. Yeah, I mean, she like 14 or something like that? Yeah, she was definitely a young girl. How old is he? I'm not sure, but probably like either his late 20s or early 30s. Yeah, it's just a whole thing. I mean, I don't know how you come back from this. I mean, you don't really know no dirt on Remy Ma except for she shot somebody, she went to jail. I mean, I don't know. But this is just... I, I can't even... I don't even have the words to just... It's just the way that Remy Ma, at first... She was just talking her shit. Mm. This is two or three minutes into it. 37 years old. Oh, and the girl was 12. Oh my god. That's. What? Oh. Like, that's his That's his daughter. This, this is him. Daughter. No, that's not literally his daughter, but I'm saying he's old enough to be her father. This is him. Yep, and she paid for a lot of stuff for him. The little girl? Oh. No, with your little girl ain't got no job. He looks a mess. He looks like but he's Nicky brother, so he shouldn't have no problem getting with somebody older. But, you know, then, but then again, it, it's not about him having a problem with really getting somebody older. That's in his year. Yeah, that's in him. Yeah, he's a pervert. Right. Yeah, he's a pervert. You know what I mean? And he probably was doing this before Nicky Minaj became Nicky Minaj. Probably was doing this in his early 20s. But that's maybe younger than that. No, but I'm saying as because Nicki Minaj has not been Nicki Minaj for that long. He's 37, yeah. so he's probably been doing this for a long time, and he just got caught. Which is horrible. Which is horrible because no telling how many other little, little young girls he was out there messing around with. Yes. Oh. And, and there's still the last that Remy Ma is coming out with a, a child's play today, and yeah, she's coming out with another song, but. Do you think this will translate into more record sales? Because her and Pedro came out with a new album, which I didn't know about, and it only sold about 11,000 copies. And I think that that's horrible because the way they all the, the all the way up sales went up, and the way they just been like it's like they always got a new song. Now I'm just surprised that they only sold so so less. And you know, I just I know that Rick Remy is one of the best, and I'm glad that she's back. If Nikki responds, which I hope she does, because you don't let nobody buy you like that, and you don't respond, I just don't know how she's going to come back at her. It better be good, because if it's not good, then Nikki is gone. But something I was thinking about today is that I noticed that Nikki Minaj don't really have no female rap friends in this business, and. VH1 did a, um, a tribute to Salt and Pepper, Missy Elliott, Queen Latifah, and Lil' Kim. And I mean, nowhere was Nicki Minaj. You had all the rap females come out, do other people. Like, you know, they were doing each other's songs, like, Chopin sure tribute to them. And Nicki Minaj was nowhere to be found. And I don't know if VH1 didn't want to invite her, or if they did invite her and she declined. But... I just think that that's bad for rap because let's be honest, Rick, Rick, what's her name? Nicki Minaj. She was basically the queen of rap. She took Little Kim's crown. Little Kim could not regain it back. Little Kim has never released an album since she's been out of jail. You had this little feud that they went through. It's over with. And now, you know, but Nicki has been doing her fucking thing. Album at the album at the album. Perfect clothes. TV shows, Nicki Minaj has been doing it all, while everybody else is just, you know, they can have their name. But Nicki Minaj is really has, has done a lot, and you cannot deny that. And the way she's been on the music charts, the, the Billboard Hot 100, she done set records for a rap female, she has done the damn thing. But now, I guess everybody want to wake up, or well, Remy Ma woke up. I want to know. I want to see how Nicki Minaj can stand to somebody that came before her, and she has to fucking kill her because if she don't, that's it. The only people that's really gonna love are the kids, like she said. The kids only love you, and that's gonna be the truth. So Nicki, you better come hard, and I mean, bitch, you better come for blood. If not, you know, like, 
Don't even respond. You just leave it up, but then you're gonna look like a punk bitch. <laughs> I'm excited! Rap is getting fun again! I am excited, but I mean, she's looking for the bags. Um, somebody's cooking. And I think it's right. But she can edit, so I can say that. I think it's Lena. Lena's here? No, right? But she was here. So last night was the 89th annual Academy Awards. And I must say, Jimmy Kimmel was not the best. No, he was not. I want Ellen DeGeneres back his on the stage. I like his show. He got some good set, like when he brought the main tweets. I don't yeah, think those true. were the, but I don't think those were the funniest main tweets. But because he said better, but whatever. I think like you know stuff. He had those kind of segments on his show, and he's good. But Jimmy, you went into this show. Keep talking about oh they're never going to invite me back. I'm going to be a horrible host. Like you went into this with the negative energy. I don't care. If you were joking or not, you went in there with the energy. Show. And yeah. you were just all right. I want Ellen DeGeneres back hosting the Oscars. Or what's his name, the guy from the Grammys? Yeah, James yeah. Corden. That yeah, would James be fun. Yeah. 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 That would be fun. Or the one that they don't want because he goes in. The British one. Uh, uh, oh, Ricky Gervais. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Because <laughs> yes, he probably might ask you, Denzel, why you didn't clap for uh, Why you didn't clap for Hey, yeah. I mean, when he did the Golden Globe that year, they were on fire. Like, they were on, they, they were hoping he don't cause it. Okay. Oh. And when he told, I think he told Brad Pitt or anything, a movie they made was horrible and it didn't do nothing in the box office. And I looked it up and he texted me right now. I said, oh my God. And everybody that was in there was cracked up when he said that because it was true. <laughs> so, this was the <laughs> So, let me tell you something. Uh, um, so, for best, so for the acting category, because you know how we don't pay attention to those sound beats and all of that stuff. Um, Herschel Ali won Best Supporting Actor for his role in the film Moonlight. Moonlight is a film that I, you know, told you guys about, like around the end of December, at the, no, the beginning of. December or the end of November. I can't remember, but I had a chance to see that movie, and I just loved it. Now, I didn't think the actors in the movie were going to be nominated, but, you know, once the awards, they started announcing, you know, people, I was like, okay, you know, because he wasn't in the movie that long. He's in the movie about a good 20, 30 minutes, because, of course, the film was not about that long. But he did a great job in that film. Which is about Rich Lai Lee, right? Yes. But it's just like Ruby D. Ruby D was nominated for her role in uh, uh, American Gangster. Yeah. She was in, I mean, you know, she saw her here and there, but she didn't have that many lines. Yeah. So he, he, he won. Was so he won, and they said that with his win, he is the first Muslim actor to win um, the Oscar. But I don't know if that's true. I mean, 89 years and not one Muslim won. You see High Performance heating and air conditioning Texan vans all over town making customers happy. Call High Performance right now and save thousands of dollars per season with special interest financing on a high-efficiency hot water boiler. High Performance will make you as happy as hell. I don't know if that's true. I mean, 89 years and not one Muslim one, I'm not sure. Maybe the first Muslim actor or something like that. Well, that's what they were saying. Oh, actually, Muslim, Muslim act. Oh, okay. they weren't saying the first Muslim. I think it was like first Muslim act. Damn, maybe because when I think about it, you gotta remember for the past eighty nine years, the majority of the actors were white. Yeah, and they got foreign films. And I don't know too many. I'm not. I'm not saying that it's not possible, but I don't know too many white Muslims, especially white Muslims in the thirties and forties and fifties. No. <laughs> They didn't even want to elect John Kennedy, who was a Catholic president. Yes, you know, that, that was hot stuff right. back in that time. Mind you, nowadays you don't know what they have. Yeah, but, but back then, they, I don't uh, understand what was the big deal. Yeah. Because they felt like the Pope, because you know, at the time, they felt like the Pope would have, the, the, the Catholic Church would have a big say in his doing and all this old crap that really means nothing. It means nothing, but that's how people thought back in those days. But yeah, I feel, I, didn't, I didn't get to see the like the first half an hour of the Oscars. I didn't get to see because I wasn't in the house, so I missed one. Yeah. And I also missed Justin 
Timberlake's performance too. Right? He opened up the show. Yeah, he opened up the show. show. Can't stop the feeling. And I'll be thinking that. I just think that that's a uh, what's his name song. Jason Jason Derulo. No. Oh, uh, what's his name? I can feel my face when I'm with like them. What was that? I don't know. The future. The weekend. Oh, okay. Yeah, like, you think that's him? Yeah, I think they're ripping his style now. Like, I don't know. Him, Katy Berry, like, come on now. Like, they ripping his style. Yeah, I don't know. Like, 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 I'm just so happy for her. I'm like, okay, no more supporting rules for Viola Davis. Everything needs to be lead. Lead. Now, unless it's a very important film that she has to be in or need to be in, like, she can now call the shots. Like, once you get a, a golden statue, you can call the shot. Well, I love the fact, you know, I mean, the supporting rules, I, I, I think, is, you know, yeah. I, because then, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, it's still an Oscar. Yes. I got an Oscar. <laughs> you know, whether I was supporting or lead. I had Oscar. You know what I mean? But I think that I'm, me and my boss, we were talking about this today, and I, we were just kind of saying, like, you know, okay, you know, I'm happy by the other one, but it's long overdue. And, and, and I so feel shy. like, I, I just feel like I've seen, don't get me wrong, I just feel like I've seen way better performances from Angela Bassett. And I feel like they all look Angela Bassett is somebody who's long going to do for an Oscar. We're gonna we're gonna get her. Okay. I that's just how I feel first. Yes. I'm happy that Viola won, but I feel like yeah. Angela Bassett yes, is but long over Jim. Yes. So we want that they don't even really invite her to even present at the Oscars. Like yeah, we won't we won't get to her. Let's let's hold Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. <laughs> and my boy, uh, he said it first, and I was like, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. And uh, for best for best actor, Casey Affleck won his role in the film Manchester by the Sea. Or Manchester, mm -hmm. like, but Manchester by the Sea. I have no idea what the film is about, but there there has been less controversy about Casey Affleck and his sexual allegations. Than it was when it came down to Nate Parker, Nate Parker and his allegations from 1999. And from 1999, and Casey Affleck is from 2010 and 2009. Yeah, but I'm going to tell you something. I still, after seeing uh, Birth of a Nation, mm -hmm. it did not scream Oscars to me. I just think that at that time, or at that, it was a climate where everybody was upset that no black films were being, um, or actors were being nominated. And that's when the Oscar so black that everybody jumped on this film like it was the greatest thing. And I don't think that And that's fine. Yeah. But I feel like I feel like here yeah, I feel like looking at the fine. clips of Manchester by the Sea, I'm like, oh, well, that's something that I wouldn't go say mediocre. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's a lot of mediocre, you know. Yeah. I just feel like and maybe I need to see the movie, but I just feel like I saw Birds of a Nation and I feel like looking at the clips I would have if it had to come down to Nate Parker and Casey Affleck nominated if he was not allowed to give it to give it to Nate. Yeah. But the issue for me is not that uh, okay, not the issue for me is not whether Birth of a Nation was Oscar worthy. Okay. The issue with me is he was, was shunned, the film was shunned, it was shunned from the Oscars, but yet this he was shunned because of these allegations from nineteen ninety nine. Let's be clear about that. This is why he was shunned. And then he did these interviews last year promoting his film, and when he was being asked about the rape allegations, he was giving you, listen, that's old, we've already been there, done that, I'm trying to talk about this film, and people really didn't like that he was doing that. Casey Affleck, on the other hand, which a lot of people said comments on that, and they made sense, because I hadn't thought about this. A lot of people, when I posted it, they said, we didn't even know that Casey Affleck even had these allegations against him. And a few people said, you want to know why we didn't know this? Because Casey Affleck himself never even came out and talked about it. He kept quiet. He kept quiet. He didn't do interviews about it the way Nate Parker did interviews. You know what I mean? He didn't talk about it. But the thing was, Nate Parker talked about it because the interviewers asked him about it. I'm almost certain Casey Affleck did interviews regarding Manchester by the Sea, but was he asked about those allegations? You see what I'm saying? I don't think he was. But the thing that I have is, the problem that I have is, again, not saying whether or not Birth of a Nation was good. The problem that I have is, if it's good enough for the goose, it should be good enough for the gander. Because 
This man in his film was shunned, literally shunned. Casey Affleck, on the other hand, was an, a, awarded an Oscar. And you know what's even more incredible? That I did even more research? Brie Lawson, I think is her name, the, the actress who presented him with the Oscar, last year she won an Oscar for Best Actress for playing none other than a great victim in that movie, Room, I believe. I think it was called Room. So it kind of was like you have this woman playing the okay. great victim, yeah. awarding an Oscar, presenting an Oscar to someone who's actually being accused of uh, not one, but two women. And one of the women was a producer in a film or something like that. And she accused him of coming into her room and climbing into her bed one night. So whatever happened, it just went away. Well, we I know what happened to Nate Parker. Something happened to Nightstand Now We know what happened to him. Yeah. We know what happened to Casey Affleck, too. He won an Oscar. But it just goes to show you. I do believe, and listen, I'm not mad at nothing because I feel like we, what we did last year, we were supposed to do with the Oscars so white. We were supposed to do it. But I do believe that the Academy knew what they were doing this year by making sure that these black films and these black actors were nominated. I do believe that. And when I saw that Viola Davis and Marshall Ali won those supporting actor roles, I knew for a fact that they wasn't giving no more Oscars out last night to anybody black. Not even if your name is Denzel Washington. Because they done already gave us what we wanted. They already gave us what we yeah, wanted. And I, I only gave them six. But you mean to tell me that Casey Affleck acted better than Denzel Washington? Yes. Then, then Denzel Washington did not act better than Casey Affleck. Yeah, but then Denzel did not act better than Casey Affleck. But then it all boils down to the voters and the academy. Yeah. Old, white, men, and women. Simple as that. But like I said, when I saw my older Davis win, I said, oh, this is, I said to myself, I said, oh, well, this is it. We ain't even got to worry about no more. You know what I mean? And to be quite honest with you, that whole shocker last night with the Best Picture Award, I actually watched the whole ceremony, and I saw when Warren Beatty, you know, and I was confused at why he was doing it. I actually, when the people from La La Land came up on the stage, I turned my TV off because I was like, all right, it's really time for me to go to bed. But I remember when I turned my TV off, I said to myself, I'm trying to figure out what's the name of this La La Land movie. It kind of, from the clips, it kind of reminded me uh, of old Hollywood the musicals and things like that. So I was saying to myself, well, wait a minute, this is why they're doing all these movies. I didn't even see the part where they then showed that they had because I had turned my TV off so the people all walk on stage. I said, oh, oh, Because I felt like, wow, I'm like, what? This is still making a lot of noise. I and mean, I'm happy for Emma Stone that she is. I, 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 I just feel like so many black movies out there are so worthy. But because it's a, I just, I look at things a little differently because I'm like, come on. Like you said, you really honestly want to tell me that Denzel Washington, Casey Affleck was better than Denzel Washington? I have never been out and seen Manchester in the City versus Manchester in the City. Manchester, obviously, versus Texas. And I'm sure they'll be on, um, you can get the same one, um, the little red thing is not what you want to do with the red sound here. But I definitely want to see what the hype was, was about for that film. Um, I'm just happy that, you know, some people feel like, you know, the Oscars do that because they need to have a moment with them. They say, like, you know, like, that they had to have their Steve Harvey moment. You could have written anything for people to watch next year because you never know what might happen. But you don't play around like that. You don't play around with these feelings and you don't know, everything. Because if I was sitting there and I'm lost, I'm like, crying. And I, I don't know, but you just don't play around like that. And Warren made a new stop button. Like, he did when he opened it. And I was, I did, but you know what? I was upset. And I kind of got upset with him. But then I got upset. I, I was going down a lot of levels of something. I kind of got upset with Warren Beatty because I said to myself, Warren Beatty, you knew that it said it was those thing. And so you should have known right off the bat that something wasn't, that something wasn't right. You should have said it. You should have said it rather than handing the envelope over to Faith Dunaway, who then made the same mistake. And to say La 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 She didn't say you ever saw enough. She just said La 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 She just said La 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 You know what I mean? And then you let the people from La La Land come up on and say, hold on. Get this, get this, because y'all ain't, I ain't hear nobody talk about this. The man that kept going. No. When they, I saw today, because I didn't watch it last night, but I saw today.
because I wanted to see what more everything they had. So when you watch it over again on YouTube, you can hear, if I'm not mistaken, more babies say when they finally, 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 you know, announce that it's moonlight and it's all this big confusion and people from moonlight uh, come up with things. You can actually hear more babies say, "Oh, y'all should go outside this evening." And I don't mind people sometimes when they try to put out here, and I'm like, you hear him saying. No, just in, in the confusion, because he's still saying that's my fault. No, you guys just keep this. Because I guess more was kind of like, listen, they don't know the one. Yeah, but that's still fine. Wow. That's still fine. That's still fine. And I heard you. you can't deny it. I heard you. And I read around it. Like, you know, but I'm just saying that. I'm happy for the film. I'm happy for the film. I'm really happy that it won. Yeah, that it's now a big part of the I'm not 
nominee, nominee for best <laughs> the damn screenplay. <laughs> I'm not going there. I'm not going there. No. I'm waiting for the way to use the movie. Oh my god. Don't let that get down there because that's going to have drugs in it. Okay. <laughs> oh, don't let that. Woo. <laughs> Baby. Okay. It's going to have drugs in it and, and sex and sex and, and rock and roll. Okay. It's rock and fucking roll and gospel and sissy oh and Aretha and Dion. Yes. And let's not nominate the new edition story, okay? For any Emmys or Golden Globes and marijuana, a lot of drugs and a lot of sex. It was naked girls. Like they did too much. It wasn't too many to be quiet. I was getting ready to say. Because she was running a whole chapter in her city. I really feel bad for her that, that her life has gotten to be this way. You know, you don't wish that on nobody. And out of 100 jobs, you guys will hire her because she says she's trans black. I mean, you can get past that. She's efficient in what she's I believe she could do her job. Only thing we found out about her is that she lied. And I know she has a baby, so she has a child that she has to raise. Wasn't she, she married? Um... Not, not I sure thought she was married. married. But and, and then they said like a bunch of book companies turn her down. Like I don't like I just feel like that's horrible. Like it feels like it's it's everything is blown out of proportion. Like, yeah. 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 But, but yeah. she do have she says she does have a book coming out. And I'm gonna be somebody that buys that book and I'm gonna support her. 
because she should not have to go through that just for a living. Like you want to offer her, a like it's just terrible. Like I can, like she was sorry. I can understand the TV, um, reality TV thing, but to do, um, to send her pornography offers like that's just horrible. That is horrible, and, and it's a lot of reality TV girls that do it, and a lot of these, the, like the teen moms and all of that shit, they all got their porns, but I'm glad that she's not the great life. Rachel, things will get better for you, and I think that more people have embraced her, or at least they say they have, or they say I just don't understand why she's having a hard time finding a job, and she's trying to find like a, right, like a regular job, something in her field, and she can't even find that. Like, I feel bad for her. That's, you know, that's all I have to say about that. But I know that things will get better. And if they want a book come out, I'll buy it. I'm not going to say I'm going to read it. But I'll buy it. Um, and then there's this big controversy. I can't remember what Stan was with a transgender male wrestling with other females because of the state law. And, um, a transgender, a transgender, transgender to be a female. No, he's he's already transitioned. No, she was she was born female and transitioned to be into a male. male. But why would but why would in any why would men be wrestling women? Because under the Texas state law for the wrestling that they do for high schools tournaments, if you if on your birth certificate it said you were born. Uh, female, then that's what you must wrestle under. So even though she's performed, she's uh, transitioned, she's wrestling as a man. A man or but male, she, but, but she has to wrestle females. He, he has to wrestle females. Because he was born a female. <laughs> yeah, so, and she won two state championships on Saturday and a lot of people were born it because you had a, a transgender male and she and he's taking testosterones and but who did he perform against? Men? Other men? Women. He had to wrestle against other women. Alright, I know it's gonna be Yeah, but but okay, so they still allowed him to wrestle. Yes. Regardless of his transition, they still said you can go ahead and wrestle even though you live in your life as a man now. Yes, but you had to wrestle with women because you were born as a female. But he wanted to eventually wrestle, wrestle with men. But they keep saying no. Okay, and then it's but like, he still won. Yes, but against a, a woman. Okay, yeah. but who has the issue? Him or who? Has Everybody. The I even have an issue with this. But see, this, this is my thing. I'm looking at it as with on his. If he has the issue with the law, then why even go in the ring to wrestle the women? Why not just protest and say I don't want to wrestle at all until I can wrestle who I want to wrestle? Like why? Why reap the benefits of it all and then complain about it? So, well, her. I think that's my point. Her thing is, his, his, damn, <laughs> he's confusing, and I had to correct him. Yes, and his thing is, he wants to wrestle against the men, right? But they won't let him, right? And he was saying that he knew that this would become a thing because of the laws, right? But he's like, I'm going to still wrestle anyway right. until they make this change. But, but the female wrestlers, the parents. A lot of people feel it's a disadvantage, and I feel the same way because men, men are stronger. Now, I'm not saying that women can't be stronger than men, but men are. But, but in most cases, men are naturally stronger than women, and she, he's taking these uh, male hormones mm -hmm. to become stronger, and your body right. changes. Your body is more developed than a female, so why? You know, it probably was something that they, the state of Texas never thought about. Right. And now this is something that a whole bunch of states <laughs> will have to think about because... Because the law probably came out years ago before this even. Before, and, yeah. you know, the transgender, especially with young teenagers transitioning, it was a thing. So I think a lot of people need to look at their, their state laws or their um, guidebooks and uh, meet up and start making some changes because I just don't feel that it's right that the transgender male had to wrestle against females. He should be wrestling against other males. Now that he's transitioned, he's taking the testosterone and other medicines that he needs to take, go ahead and wrestle with the men. And let's see how strong he is now. Because you got to be stronger than a woman. So, 
Yeah. It's just a big thing. It's always a big thing when you have these laws because it's like, yeah, it's, 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 it's it, I don't, I don't even know because this story is very confusing. Yeah. But a lot of people don't, you know, a lot of, a lot of parents don't even want to. But then why did, okay, so you say, he, okay, so then why did the girls get in the ring with them? Because they had no choice but to wrestle. They did have a choice. They could say, I don't want to wrestle. Then it would be a big thing. It's a big thing. Oh, it's a big thing now. Yeah. Like, I mean, come on. Like, that's why I'm saying, why is it that they want to have their cake and eat it too? Like, no. Either it's an issue that you're wrestling this man who was once born a woman, or it's not an issue. Because if you get in the ring with them and you wrestle him, then apparently that's letting me know, okay, it's not an issue. But then you say, because you lost, it is an issue. But it might be also as a challenge, like, I could probably be him. Right. That's but my thing is, too, I feel like if these women, these young women would have won against him, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Yeah, but so because they lost, it's a big thing. thing. This is, yeah, I mean, I, I would complain, too, because it's a damn... Listen, I'm not going to talk about, listen, that's like me saying, Kevin, don't go inside that Chinese store because I see so many mice and roaches in there, and then go in there and order a platter. <laughs> Either you're not going to eat from them or you are going to eat from them. Either you're not going to wrestle with them or you are. You can't have it both ways. I'll wrestle with you, but I'm still going to complain about it. No, I think that they. No. I think more probably the parents probably complain more. But a lot of people are upset. Even some of the female wrestlers were uh, definitely upset. But I do hope that they change those laws and meet up and talk about it, and then it could be a conversation for other schools and their guidelines because. A lot of people are now transitioning, but they feel like they're not in the right body. They transition. It's happening earlier. I still, that's another topic. I just think, wait a little bit longer before you do it, but it's, it's happening much younger. And don't even go there. Donald, wait, wait, fucking wait. And then you got other schools. Then you got, you got Donald Trump telling the schools now. Oh, it's up to them to decide if they want to have um, yeah. trains in the bathroom. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's tough to be a trans a transgender in in this time, and it's tough to be gay in this time. But I think it's even worse. Not worse. I think it's tougher to be transgender because now everyone having these bathroom rules. Like before, it was never an issue. Now it's an issue. And then the students who are trans, like I. I, I I feel bad for them, but I'm glad that one student is keeping up the fight and is going to the Supreme Court. And uh, oh, I've seen, seen it on the view. Good yeah. luck with that. Yeah. Especially but I mean, the Supreme Court that's about to have take place. It's still the same people that voted for in favor of gay marriage. They're still on the bench. No, yeah, but but it was one Republican that sided with the Democrats. It wasn't. It was only one. And now you have an added Republican that's on there. But who's to say if now it's gonna be more Republicans on there. Am I saying this right? No, it's, it's, no, it's the same. It's the same. Yeah, you're right. It's absolutely the same. But who's to say if that particular might Republican or might change their mind? Or who's to say in a year or two that Republican that decides they want to retire? Yeah, it's, it's, you know what I mean? Like it's oh, it's 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 tough. Yeah, it's tough. It's definitely tough. But you know what's even more tough <laughs> is that Donald Trump has now come out and said that the reason why the Oscar blunder happened last night with the Best Picture incident was because the Oscars paid too much attention on him. Nigga, it wasn't even about you last night. You know, you had a few sprinklers here and there say something, but it wasn't even about you. And I'm so shocked that he didn't tweet Jimmy Kimmel back, because that would have been a collective <laughs> And you want to tweet him back? Donald Trump was watching. Yeah, he was watching. Steve Bannon said, "Hit you back." I tweet him back. You better not. And he was itching to tweet him back. Oh my God! He, oh my God! He was itching. Oh, thank you, Lord, for all you have done for me. Donald Trump. Oh my God! We gotta deal with this. This is next. Two months. It's always a ah! Don't say that. Yeah, this month has been two months. It's going to be president. If something to go down in two months, I'm going to look at you and say, Kevin, I got to quit the show. I didn't think I was a part of it. Uh, and I ain't got time to go to jail. Look, and you know who's a big advocate? Maybe I can finally get this interview with Beyonce. 